Hello isopod fans, this is Wally with Supreme Isopods and we have a special video for you today. I'm going to be talking about two of my favorite isopods and we have a special gift to open. We'll do that real quick and I'll read a card. I'll read a card and I might not read too much of it. Stay tuned and let's get into the isopods. Today we're talking about Armadillidium punticana and Armadillidium orange vigor. These are two of my favorite isopods because they are so beautiful. It doesn't really take a whole lot to keep these isopods. You've seen my other videos. Make sure that you have a moist area. Make sure you have a dry area. I feel they're very adaptable to their situations. Lots and lots of leaves, a couple of pieces of decaying wood, bark, cork bark, uh, calcium substrate should be a good blend of dirts. I like to use worm castings with these enclosures. Food can be pretty much anything. I like to feed the supreme isopod shell. I like to feed a lot of vegetables, zucchini and carrots and pumpkins and squash, but it's kind of up to you on what you feed. For proteins, I give dried mealworms, I dr give dried food, uh, fish, I give dried shrimp, and a myriad of other foods and I'll throw a link up here that you can take a look at on all the foods that we feed. I have two really important points on these isopods that I'll get into, but before we do that I'd like to open a special gift. No indication of what it is other than it says koi on the box. Now I'm not going to be koi with you, but we'll take a second to open that and let me see how far I can get through this this brief note here. And if you know who that is, that's V. Berry Creations. She has some wonderful paintings. She has some unbelievable artwork that she does. So let's see how far I can get through this. This is a thank you from me and Seth. And, and there's two reasons why I might not get through the whole thing. Number one, I can't read it. Number two is uh, Veronica is a very, very special friend. And so is Seth. And I really appreciate what they're doing in the hobby. All right, let's go. All right, uh, this is a thank you from me and Seth. Also if, your also, if your lovely wife Nanette wants an isopod mug, let me know. S uh, series two will be here in September, so um, that way she has a bigger variety to pick from. You, you both rock, as always, V-Berry. Thank you very much, Veronica. Let's see what it is. Well, I'm, I'm guessing it's a mug. And I'm guessing it's a koi mug, but wait until you see this. This is going to be so cool. I've seen these on Facebook, and how about that? I'll show some pictures of this mug, but it's just unbelievable. Unbelievable. All right, let's talk isopod. So there's a couple of points that I want to bring up about these armadillidium. Number one, as you can see here, I have a locking lid. The reason I have a locking lid on this is because they like to climb. These like to climb probably as much as any isopods I've ever seen, both the Orange Vigor and the Punta Cana. This is a gasket lid and I make sure that this is on tight all the time. Absolutely all the time. The second point I want to share about these isopods is that, and this is specific to my culture here, it looks like the substrate is getting a little bit old. And the reason I can tell that is because I can see some shells in the substrate and that can be one of two factors. Number one, the adults are dying off a little bit or number two, the substrate is getting a little bit old and I'm getting a little bit extra die off in the culture. So these two cultures are ready to be changed and I'll, and I'll do that this weekend. These cultures have been set up probably about eight to 10 months in these enclosures and I think it's really close to time that these substrates should be changed out. And I've got a video right here that you can watch to see how we change out our substrates. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next week.